Hey everyone, welcome to shareholder call number eight for Humble. Uh, here's our safe harbor statement and then our COVID impact statement. So quarterly update for the period ending September 30th, 2021, and then rounding into, into the end of the year here. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, Humble is a web three company built to simplify the packaging of new technologies like blockchain. So super exciting stuff, but we think it needs simplifying and packaging. Um, some of it is novel stuff that we're working on internally. And then some of it is uh, this incredible proliferation that's occurring in fintech where you have hundreds of new things being built and pushed out into the market. And um, We've really studied some of what happened historically with other tech markets, particularly Apple as a good example, um, where they took and harnessed this really strong proliferation of third-party applications and put it into one place. There's other examples, Netflix, uh, et cetera, that don't all have owned and operated content. So some of this is stuff we're building. Some of it is stuff that is being built really well by other people, but we want to put it in one click for you in one place. Uh, in terms of Humble, so it's a little bit of a reflective time, reflective time for me. Um, you know, we are one year into this. We announced our uh, merger would be going on on November 12th. We, we made that announcement uh, and it happened shortly thereafter. So uh, on the year so far, we've delivered around 3,459% for our shareholders. You know, it's never enough. And, um, you know, you, you think about what you could have done better for people who, you know, didn't time the market properly and, and so on. And you just can't predict that as a company. I wish we had more control over it. And certainly, you know, there's no guarantees on what the future holds. We're, a, we're an early stage technology company. So there's a ton of risk to investing in Humble. Um, but certainly, you know, the thing we can guarantee is that we come to work every day to try to put, put in something um, that's of value to you guys as shareholders and you all. So thank you for believing in us. Um, on any given day, we take the field for uh, you know, a larger number of people that would attend a Super Bowl in the stadium. So it's a lot of pressure every single day um, for us at Humble. And I feel it, you know, I get told I look 10 years older this year. <laughs> um, so we really intend to try to represent you all well um, for, um, <clears throat> for what we need to do here at Humble. So thank you for uh, being just an incredible shareholder base. I also want to thank everybody who got us here. So we had some you know, starting with day one guys like George Sharp, who got us here, um, Ernie Stern, Michael Pollock, um, Brian Ines, um, Crowell Mooring, others. So we just really want to thank um, Shane at Nimble, uh, you know, just so many people that helped provide us with great services that, you know, over time, we'll probably bring a lot of stuff in-house, you know, IR, PR, CFO stuff. But um you know, in the meantime, we get a lot of ancillary support from our law firms and our accounting firms and so on in zones that we just had to scale quickly because this thing, um, you know, grew grew fast once we went once we went public. So thank you all. And uh, we will continue to put in the work on your behalf. And I appreciate our teams that do so every day. OK, so what do we get done this year and then what do we have planned on the roadmap? Um, so we now have the buy crypto or digital assets, as we call them, earn interest, use and send stable coins um, and exchange digital assets, as well as send gasless peer-to-peer -peer transactions inside the Humble Wallet. So no need to leave the, the Humble Wallet. Um, what's next? We have um, the account lookup feature, meaning like you want to find someone else who has a Humble Wallet and send them monies. Um, so we've got that coming online. Uh, in the coming quarters, uh, ACH integration, meaning uh, you know, more pathways to onboarding money. Um, and then the block ETXs, we're really keen on those products. And we think that if we get them into one click in the mobile app, we'll have an ecosystem here that starts to line up pretty well for the customer over the next two quarters. Uh, in terms of the marketplace, that's NFTs, ticketing, and over time tokenized real estate. Uh, we'll continue to launch collections there, as you saw from the last quarterly report. We've deployed a lot of stock. We intend to try to bring that home a bit more next year, but um, we've, we've you know, expanded our brand ambassador list, and uh, we have a lot of marketing opportunities in the pipeline that I've waited to try to deploy until the right time and when all our products was, were live as an ecosystem and so on. 
We also think that NFTs and ticketing will become the same modality over time. Uh, meaning we think the fan, the customer wants to get a ticket inside their phone that's more than just an e-ticket um, or a printed pass to some event. So we'd like to try to figure out how to combine both digital, but also glossy hard tickets with maybe a QR code on the back that scans to an NFT commemorative in the Humble Wallet. Um, we also need to drive some SEO and SEM marketing around our Humble Tickets platform. Um, that's done well. I appreciate our teams getting that launched and um, we'd like to try to grow that over time here with some SEO and some SEM uh, around sport and, and music particularly. Uh, lastly, throughout this year, we launched the Block Index, Block Active, and Block Thematic products. Uh, really need to drive that down into the mobile app. You know, the whole thing we want to do at Humble is get this thing down into fewer clicks, um, more custodial options over time on the long, long term roadmap. Long term roadmap. Um, but right now, we want to get those Block ETX products into the mobile app because they're they're um, really cool products, and we think that the customer will will enjoy that. Lastly, we were proud to uh, acquire Monster Creative uh, and Tickery, both of which are really productive business lines. Those are set and forget business lines. Uh, what I need to do is, is make sure that we're integrating those things into our businesses. Um, so not only do they drive revenue, but um, also the creative studio piece, um, you know, making sure that we have really good quality NFTs, nice website, uh, great mobile experiences, and so on. So uh, look for Monster Creative to become more than just you know, one of the world's leading trailer and packaging companies and really get into uh, some of the things we're doing on the blockchain in the coming year. And then Tickery, you know, we want to continue to drive route top line ticket sales and then bottom line revenue growth. Uh, big, big difference between those two things. So I want to make sure we're clear. Um, and then America's expansion. So what can we do down in Latin America and so on? Um, I'm headed down to Latin America um, here in the coming months and we'll have some discussions and so on. Um, I, I, we openly maintain that we are on the look for some M&A uh, in ticketing that would help us grow our gross ticket sales as well as bottom line revenues over time while still beating the competition where possible. Sorry, when you're public, you have to put in riders on everything. It's kind of annoying. Um, okay, so what are we building at Humble? A platform for the blockchain economy. So that's Humble Pay. Uh, primarily the mobile app product, uh, digital listings, tickets and NFTs, and then tokenized real estate over time, um, and then digital assets. So ETX is simple exposures to active thematic index products and so on. Uh, we do think a lot of this stuff gets tokenized over time, uh, hopefully in a custodial fashion inside the Humble Wallet, but that's going to take time and uh, making no promises there in terms of how and when that all rolls out. But that's our thesis is that over time, all this behavior will get tokenized on blockchain. Here's how it sort of sets up across divisions and the experience. Our goal is to move quickly on, you know, single sign on, 2FA, some of the other things that we know we need to get done on the data architecture side to make sure the customer has a seamless experience across both mobile uh, and the desktop web. Um, so that's buy crypto, earn interest, send pure payments, um, you know, always minding regulatory. We, we really want to be the first through the door on a lot of things here in the United States. Um, but at times we'll lean into third party partners and so on uh, who, who have the regulatory uh, purview to be able to move on some things or, um, you know, out, outsource some of that um, until we know more. Uh, humble marketplace, NFTs, ticketing, and then over time real estate. Uh, as well as active thematic and index products. So just making a really clear um, sort of seamless experience for the customer uh, within a tokenized format over time. Uh, on any given day, we're one of the most followed blockchain brands in the world. So um, <clears throat> hoping to leverage some of that social media into marketing over time uh, for our product lines where appropriate. Uh, in terms of the quarter, uh, we grew revenues by 430%. So a nice growth outcome there. Uh, we worked the phones and got our preferred bees lined up on um, establishing some uh, conversion restrictions that will help with the dilution and the dilution FUD. And um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be putting those into practice here uh, over the coming year. Independent board of directors, we uh, were able to recruit Peter Schulte and Brad Hoagland. So our thanks to those guys for lending us their good name and uh, some of their expertise. Um, that's, that's also with an audit committee. 
uh, humble shareholder conference. Can't thank everybody enough. It's so cool to see how diverse our um, shareholder base is. You know, all different walks of life you know, and belief systems and everything. It's just it's such an inclusive group, and I, I value that a ton. Um, and then we launched humble tickets and um, got that going. So. Uh, as well as first full quarter with Monster and uh, Tickery in, in the fold on Hubble. So really good quarter, actually really productive. Uh, here's just sort of how the quarterly revenues line up. You wouldn't know it from some of the way people post fake information on social, but it is what it is. We just keep moving. So quarterly revenues. Uh, the company, again, another data point that's important and factual is that the company has $5 million in the bank and, of course, will be going out for additional uh, funding, uh, you know, in, in terms of the next couple of quarters. We'll, we'll make sure we're, we're looking for funding, actively seeking it. We know what it takes to compete in fintech. The company remains hyper-focused on humble pay and is engaging with Kelton Tech. With a typo there, we need a second L. Wouldn't be humble if we didn't have a typo. So, um, Kelton Tech, uh, you know, we're going to be working with them. We brought on eight, eight, up to up to eighteen resources from Kelton Tech. Our our humble team is just terrific on the tech side and product side. I'm very proud of what they've delivered uh, over the last year. Uh, but if they need it, they'll have additional resources through the holiday season, just because things can get thin a little bit on the holiday. But our humble tech team is going to get. Uh, that ACH integration piece done. They're going to get user profiles and account lookup so you all can send gasless stable coins to one another and other digital assets within Humble. Um, and then the block ETX integration. So that will require a cross-functional initiative between Humble Pay and Humble Financial teams, both of which I trust uh, implicitly. Humble Revenues delivered its first quarter, Humble delivered its first quarter with over a million in revenue, um, 1.2 million approximately to be, uh, to be more accurate. Um, and then we rolled in Tickery and Monster Creative. So one of the benchmarks of being a successful early stage high risk startup like Humble is how well do you, how well do you roll in your subsidiaries that you've acquired? So I think we, we are doing a good job there so far and that's a testament to the teams that that joined us more than anything. I kind of stay out of their hair as best I can, but we want to maximize that as we learn more about each other. Ticketing continues to grow. I want to be really clear that gross ticket sales are different than bottom line revenues. Um, so, you know, I think for us, if we want to hit the stretch goals that I've set for our team for next year, we probably need to make a move on acquiring an additional ticketing business and we will continue to be on the hunt to do that. Um, but Tickery, in the meantime, continues to be a live nation for Latin America type of thesis, and I think they can do do all of that, just given the team. They've been here with us this week at Humble, and it's just a rock star team. They're very gelled together. Um, I've really enjoyed kind of visiting with them and, and actually learned a lot about how we can build our culture here at Humble as well. So it's been really cool. Um, and then lastly, you know, we need to try to use less stock next year. Part of this was making ourselves big on the trail early, trying to make sure that we got, you know, a wide network of business associates and brand ambassadors and so on. But expect Humble to tighten the belt on its use of stock in the coming year. Um, so, so that's just something we have our eye on. In terms of our breakdown of spending, Humble Pay, Humble Marketplace, and Humble Financial, so, you know, in, in the main, one of every $2 can, can go out to Humble Pay. And that probably is a bit bolstered now with the Kelton edition. Um, so, but that's fine. I mean, that's our core product line. Everything needs to be mobile and we've got to move, move on those products. So I push our teams harder than you do to get everything done and they're doing a great job. Uh, in terms of officers, co-founders and directors, again, we initiated some um, pretty strict limits here and wanted to make sure that the dilution FUD was constrained, confined uh, further with details and facts like those that are listed here. So 5% for December, 2021 and January, 2022, and 3% for February through May of 23. So a uh, big thank you to everybody who participated in that. Um, 
you know, we, <laughs> the preferred bees are people who bet on us early. A lot of them are people who bet on us early as angel investors, putting their high risk capital on the line to get us, you know, in the game. And these are people who are, you know, you're meeting with them in homes or coffee shops and saying, hey, I have this big idea, you know, will you back me? And they have, you know, when you're meeting with them as angel investors, there's no clear path to liquidity. There's an extreme amount of risk as there still is with home. And so I just really wanted to, um, you know, get them a return, but also set up a really structured and intelligent and thoughtful um, way of kind of uh, making sure that the dilution story was contained and, and thoughtful. So we continue to thank our preferred bees for their early bets on Humble, and we're right behind them. Uh, independent directors, Brad Hoagland, Peter Schulte, I really like these two guys. They're, you know, Brad is just a very focused dude. He really is going to get everything done. He's just a guy you can kind of hitch your wagon to, and you know you're going to get home on whatever you're trying to do. So he's a He's a big get for us and brings us audit committee experience as well. Peter Schulte joins us from Harvard and Yale. Um, so decent, decent education there. Uh, but he's a really good dude and he uh, does a lot of cool things. He's in um, a number of nonprofits as well, some of which are already engaged in blockchain tracking uh, from farm to table and factory to floor. So lots to talk about with him on the blockchain piece as well. In terms of my scorecard for year one, you know, I, I use a lot of sports analogies um, right now and just because we're in a very primal time and um, I want to get get everything done for everybody and represent you well uh, as the, the home team at Humble. So, uh, you know, I think I'll get better better in my second year next year because everybody does and, and that's how it works in, in sports or in life. So um, I, I intend to represent you. Um, better next year and and you know you learn something every time you know you get more methodical or more thoughtful or more conservative about your messaging or you know um, more thoughtful about timelines and milestones like we want to deliver every time we say hey we think we can ship the software product next quarter you know did, did we push the team too much did we ask for too much you know and so on so we're going to be really thoughtful methodical conservative about what we guide uh, in the coming year as our business gets more mature uh, the shares I have sold are zero, so it you know kind of rubs me when people go, oh, it's a pump and dump at Humble. It's like, well, I kind of have to have sold a share for it to be that. And by the way, I work 20 hours a day trying to get this thing done, so it's really annoying actually. But um, shares sold zero, salary one dollar. Again, not sure how I'm fleecing anybody with that, but um, you know people like to make things personal on the OTCs. Um, common shares retired, 231 million and some odd. Um, so constantly trying to reduce the float for you guys, lock up conversion levels, et cetera. Um, prefer, preferred be uh, conversions out of the main float as well. We're at 79,625,000. So, you know, we're constantly trying to reduce share count, constantly trying to find ways to drive shareholder value. Um, and I'm, I'm locked up on this thing, you know, um, trying to get it home over the coming year so. Um, we're right there with you, and we are constantly trying to find ways to drive value for you, um, and we thank you for that. Uh, in terms of just some breakdowns by division, uh, we think blockchain is going to need a new consumer platform. You know, there's cool things going on. There's digital exchanges. There's, you know, new product lines and so on, but we really think that something in the main is required. Um, you know, in looking at historical tech cycles, there was always a couple of big winners that sat on top of all this intense sort of bifurcated proliferation of new tech. And we think that's happening in blockchain. There's all kinds of breakout little cool stuff going on, but consumer packaging layer is where we think the big win is to be at. We want to thank everybody in that, in that same vein for participating in our beta program. Um, you know, we needed your help. You gave it to us. We think we've delivered a great product so far based on your feedback and more to come. Key features we see here, buy crypto or digital assets, earn interest through third part, trusted third party partners, um, USD stable coins, um, you know, constantly looking at regulatory there, uh, wanting to be the first through the door, but also really being mindful about what compliance and regulatory look like around, around these things. And we just think that, you know, US stable coins have a lot of really high upside opportunity for consumers as use cases, but, um, you know, being, being mindful of, 
how they're set up for the consumer and making sure there's lots of protections for people and so on. So we're right behind uh, regulatory on this thing and want to make sure that we uh, are fully compliant and, and minding the store on that. So we're, we're always watching that and, you know, ripped from the news on what we need to do and can get done. Uh, and then the send and receive piece. We know you want peer to peer. I do too, very badly. I've been pushing for it like crazy and our tech team is going to rise to the occasion. So we'll get that done. Here's some just quick looks at stuff, more coming here. Um, we've got a nice tech team set up here at Humble. We'll be hiring more in the coming year, constantly recruiting front end and back end and so on. Um, so thanks to those guys for their hard work and their effort. Um, really nice sort of handoff from product to tech here. I wanna make sure that our business team is reflecting that well. Um, so we've got a great team, they're doing good tech. Um, really nice product managers as well and designers. So our thanks to Cynthia and Adrian and others, um, as well as Javier and Frack and many others. Um, so they're doing a good job. We wanted to get them plenty of resources at the holiday and, and, and ongoing. So we thank Kelton Tech. They, they bring forward a pedigree of delivering a lot of Fortune 500 products. So they'll be, you know, giving us tons of air cover here at Humble to make sure we get get to the finish line on all the stuff you, you know, we need to deliver for you as customers and shareholders. Uh, Humble Data, Javier and his team will really be looking at this in the coming year in terms of data architecture, sort of a seamless experience across the different silos that you run into, either natively or um, through third-party partners. So you have that sort of Netflix thing where, you know, some of it's in-house content, some of it's brought forward from other studios and you know, independence and so on. So there's a lot of different providers out there. We want to pick the best ones for you or develop it ourselves. So we always have the uh, build, buy, or plug-in mentality to keep moving quickly and give you something that's quite easy to use. Patent filings are out there. So we've got those going for both sort of the comprehensive tokenization of new asset classes and existing asset classes that could uh, serve to be updated uh, on blockchain and uh, system and method for transferring currency using blockchain as well. So we've put forward some of those patent layers as well that we think could tuck into Humble over time. Uh, Humble Financial, this team is just terrific. Alvin, others uh, who you know provide some service to Humble there on thinking through product lines and services for the consumer. There's just some cool stuff going on. You know, there's some meme on Twitter about how this, you know, sort of old world financial sector is all of a sudden getting keyed up into Ethereum and NFTs and uh, financial products that can be migrated onto blockchain through tokenization and tucked into a wallet like Humble. So um, it's happening, the thesis is happening and we hope to be a big part of it. Uh, so we've developed these non-custodial algorithmic products that sit on top of modern day exchanges, right? You have the NYSE, the NASDAQ, and then you have sort of the Coinbase, Bittrex, Binance layer of modern day digital asset exchanges. Um, and we wanted to provide a layer on top of those that can be accretive to, to our business and to the consumer. So thanks to Calvin for the improved rebalancing, real-time pricing, increased speeds, and refactored ordering process. So these guys get it done and um, we'll be tucking it next to the mobile app. Really good work on the detail pages as well. Our thanks to Nick and Jacob. They, they are just awesome and we really appreciate the work that's going on in here to think through the packaging of a new asset class. The NFT gallery, um, starting to see some product shipping out of there. We'll, we'll also be doing some testing with our partners at Blocks to see if we can reduce gas fees and emissions over time for you, um, as well as do some novel registry and metadata um, type of storage that we think has some near-term potential at Humble regarding um, the metadata and the registry piece. Um, we think there's still a GoDaddy for blockchain to be had here, where you can sort of track, buy, sell, and register your assets, um, which in the main is what blockchain is so, um, in terms of the registry. So. We think there's a big opportunity there. You can also set royalties, cross-populate to OpenSea, and uh, you know purchase with crypto and, and fiat. In terms of Monster, uh, you know this team is so talented, and we are thankful to have them as part of our um, broader portfolio mix. Really want to start to integrate them well with NFTs. You know we have a Monday call that's pay, marketplace, financial, monster, integrity. Like that's how the call sets up. At any given time, there's 35 to 50 people on it on a Monday. And it's really it's really magical to see. You know, I, I think 
part of the reason I'm so protective of humble or prideful of humble in terms of wanting it to get to its its end state is that um, we have really good people working at this business, and I, I just want to make sure that we uh, protect the house and and have a great place for people to foster their work um, in the coming years. So I'm very hopeful for that, and we have great people that work here, and that includes our sub subsidiaries. Uh, you know, as a as a data point on that, here's you know who they work with. Here's the trusted work product that. Um, Monster gets uh, empowered with by people who are the best in the world at what they do. So we're thankful that Hummel can um, service Marvel, Netflix, HBO, others, and we'll learn a lot from the packaging of these assets as we go upstream into our uh, platform and our mobile application. Humble tickets. Again, you know, our thesis is that ticketing sits across three layers, white label, secondary, and primary. We will either build or buy whatever it takes to get in the game on all these things. Um, I'm not going to make any claims about stretch goals right now because it's too hard to determine if we'll pick up another business or not. But certainly we're on the look. And I'm very proud of what we've done near term on Humble Tickets and on Tickery. We also think that tickets and NFTs will be converged over time. I've said that 100 times, but it's right there for the taking. So I want us to do it. And certainly we'll be doing some tests, perhaps before through the end of the year with Nick Carter and some others about things we can do that are novel to converge tickets and NFTs. That's a big opportunity for Humble. It can sit right in the mobile app over time and I wanna get it done. So I'm sure our teams are working very hard on it. I know Glenn is and, and some others. So. Through our partnership, syndication partnership, we have about $4 billion of ticketing content that we can lean into to push through. Um, as along with competitive price discounts, it's a joy to see you all on uh, Twitter and, and um, social media saying, oh, you know, I saved a hundred bucks on Humble tickets or this and that, you know, and we can never guarantee that, you know, it's just something that we try to do. And we encourage you to shop Humble tickets for um, your ticketing needs, as well as, um, you know, we will move over into, into some kind of blockchain authentication in the years to come. And, you know, that's not going to happen overnight, but I do think the tickets ultimately will migrate to blockchain. Um, you know, maybe we're wrong, maybe we're right, but we'll be we'll be experimenting with that here at home. Um, seating maps, nice experience. Again, thanks for your feedback on this. We're excited that we're delivering a really good product right out of the box for you. Uh, the ticket sales mix. This we need to update this. I think this is probably now more. Uh, more equitable uh, across music. Um, so I'll, I'll look at that in the next call. My bet to you is that this will be more, you know, that sports and music will have a more sort of equitable balance. Right now, this was, you know, a lot of sport coming out of the COVID, the Delta surge and all that. But um, we think that this gets, gets more musical in its balance. Uh, Tickery delivered 6,876,000 thousand eight hundred forty three dollars in gross ticket sales for the quarter since coming on with us June 3rd so nice nice quarter for them uh, their first full quarter here with humble and I'm look forward to looking forward to joining up with them here shortly after the call um, to further our uh, meeting each other they all flew in from the East Coast and so on so it's been great to, to meet them in terms of marketing you know we we have a beautiful new office and and all that. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. And we really pushed hard to get that done. We've used it a lot, even just this week. We'll be using it more for the podcast. So good good headquarters. And I'm glad we, we did what we did to get this thing done. Um, we've also got some really nice brand ambassador relationships. So these aren't done. This isn't just a one and done for us to have some profile at things like the Olympics. We'll be We'll be working with our brand ambassadors throughout the year. So uh, again, I wanted to sign up uh, plenty of marketing firepower for when we think our products are ready and, and deserve a look from the broader market. Um, we're getting real close here. So um, I just wanted to make sure that we have a good marketing stable in hand and, and we do, so that's great. Um, the podcast is going well. I think I saw us touch number 25 at some point this week or last week on the Spotify tech chart. So that was super cool. 
Um, that vast, that ranking vacillates obviously um, quite a bit. But I think after Nick and I did our show, it was like number 25 for a minute there on Spotify. So that was cool to see. And we'll keep driving that forward uh, in the coming, coming quarters. Um, thanks to Dustin, who I, I remain in touch with. And you know, we'll see if we end up doing some further business and so on. But I really wanted to invest in the share, the first annual shareholder conference. I just had such good feedback on this. And our team got four or five days, to get three or four days together. And that was super cool. Just a lot of good bonding and um, so on between the team. That was worth the price of admission alone. We got good time with our preferred bees. And then, you know, some of our 130,000 some odd Common shareholders, um, common float shareholders flew in and uh, just loved meeting with them and, and all of that. Some of you are, you know, mo modest celebrities of your own now within the humble ecosystem. So um, thank you all for, for coming in and it was nice to meet you in person and kind of get to know you a little bit better. It was really cool. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure because we represent you and we've got to, got to get this thing done. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of really, fun event to, to meet everybody and sobering to see the amount of people we represent here. So we'll get it, hope to get it done for you here. In terms of what's coming in the year ahead, so again, really good first year, but a lot of learning on what we can do better. We're constantly kind of lashing ourselves on, hey, what could we have done better? And, um, you know, I take a lot of that on my shoulders and so on. But, um, you know, I think for next year, we need to scale our core products, do targeted global marketing, so opening up the marketing funnel a bit more, uh, driving top line sales, uh, and of course bottom line revenues. But I'm not as, you know, I'm not as focused on bottom line right now as I am on driving top line and growth, quarter over quarter growth, as well as looking at targeted acquisitions. We make no promises, but we were always on the hunt for uh, things that we could fit in here. Um, right now, I'm very focused on ticketing, so we'll see we'll see what happens there. But um, again, we want to thank you for a good year one. Um, there's always stuff we can improve, and we know that. And we thank you for your feedback on that, and we'll um, continue to do the best we can on your behalf. So thank you again from from Humble, and more to come in the in the year ahead. So thank you.